spending the night at home or behind bars. I'm Cassie Taylor and coming up next on WVU News, I'll tell you how one organization is working to revitalize Morgantown. Did you know one in 50 people will fall victim to a violent crime? I'm Robert Lee and I'll tell you some ways to protect yourself. Our Emmy Award winning WVU News starts now. Did you know that you can have a lawyer in the palm of your hand? There's now an app that can help you when you get pulled over. I'm Paige Madden. And I'm Emily Swecker. You have probably seen a rundown building or two in Morgantown. Coming up, we'll tell you what one organization is doing about them. These stories and more on WVU News, an Emmy Award winning newscast produced by television journalism students right here at West Virginia University. According to the FBI, over 750,000 Americans are assaulted each year. Reporter Robert Lee joins us now in the studio to tell us what you can do to keep yourself safe. Robert? Thanks, Emily and Paige. West Virginia University has reported over 140 violent crimes in the past three years alone. And the biggest target? Women. Specifically, female college students between the ages of 18 to 25 are three times more likely to become a victim of assault. The majority of these attacks are happening at night. I learned about the importance of safety while walking alone after dark. In the last month, there have been three people stabbed on High Street, an armed robbery at CVS, an attempted abduction, and a sexual assault. On average, more than 4,000 aggravated assaults occur each year in West Virginia. University Police Chief Bob Roberts says there are ways to help protect yourself from falling victim. When altercations, physical altercations tend to get started, it deals with people's voices raising, you should leave and get out of the way. Uh, don't put yourself in harm's way is what we really try to tell people. Of the crimes occurring on campus, over 80% are committed by students. If you find yourself in a situation where you need police assistance, there are over 30 blue emergency poles, just like this one, located all around campus. But what do you do if you're not near one of these blue poles? WVU senior Alexandria Zabolas, who's afraid to walk at night, will drive her car halfway to class just to shorten the walking distance. Being female, it's made me nervous to be by myself. I mean, I have pepper spray, and I always walk with like my keys in my hand, and I really don't feel safe walking by myself. And with Cibola's being one of 46% of WVU's female population, Chief Roberts says the best thing to do if you're going to walk during the night is to walk in pairs. If you would like to learn more tips to keep yourself safe and walking alone, you can visit the website on the bottom of your screen. Emily and Paige, back to you. Thanks, Robert. Have you ever found yourself in another scary situation while driving, perhaps at a DUI checkpoint? And Paige, did you know that the Morgantown Police Department alone conducted more than 4,000 traffic stops last year? Reporter Kaylee Gunderson learns about an app that may come in handy if you get pulled over. Each year, more than 4 million college students will drive under the influence. One WVU student, Brooke Parks, was charged with a DUI without actually contributing to this statistic. They never did any type of field sobriety tests. They never asked me if I was impaired. They never did anything but yet they just charged me with a DUI. An app called Dewey Dialer is claimed to be just like having a lawyer in your pocket. It was designed for cases like Brooks to provide lawyers with a clearer understanding of the arrest. Morgantown Police Chief N. Preston says while the app might have its uses, it isn't necessary. We do our job, we do it uh, properly. Uh, we're already recording most of the incidents that we have, whether it's on body cameras or in car cameras. So uh, another recording device is only going to you know, duplicate what is already being done now. While a simple recording could have no effect on the case, its purpose is to protect the rights of the citizen. And here's how it works. When you get pulled over, simply open the Dewey Dialer app and press the button. Your phone will then record the interaction between you and the officer and send it to a selected lawyer in your area. DUI lawyer Harley Wagner encourages all of his clients to record even the smallest encounter with law enforcement. I work with officers all over the state. Many of them are fine people just trying to do their job. So I think it protects them more in this 2015 climate than it does the citizen, but of course it also protects the citizen. As for Brooke Park, she says that using the app sooner could have made a huge difference in her case. Kaylee Gunderson, WVU News, Morgantown. The app is free and can be downloaded right now for Android phones. Soon you'll be able to also download the app to iPhones. 
While your cell phone may help you out if you get pulled over, cell phones are causing issues for first responders in Morgantown. That's right, Emily. Landline phones have brought in the majority of funding for 911 centers, and now that money is running dry. But who should pay for the 911 fee? That's the question emergency officials and county commissioners are trying to figure out. With more people and less funding, emergency crews are struggling because students are using cell phones instead of landlines. 911 fees can only be collected on landlines and cannot be collected from cell phones. County commissioners also plan to look at how other college towns have handled first responder funding. The Northern West Virginia Brownfields Assistance Center has brought their Bad Buildings program to Morgantown. They recently received a $10,000 grant for this program. Cassie Taylor reports on how officials plan to redevelop vacant and abandoned structures throughout the city. Brownfields are a common sight in West Virginia communities. Empty storefronts and homes are littering the city and the Bad to Better Buildings program is looking to change that. When you start talking about it, people start to understand like this is a serious issue on a lot of different fronts. Working in conjunction with WVU Marshall and the local governments, the program has helped identify over 1,000 structures throughout the state and are hoping to do the same in Morgantown. Project manager Luke Elser says the effects of these structures on a town could be unfortunate. So it, I mean, it hurts the sense of community. People wanting to live there and people feeling like it's my town. Um, it hurts everybody's pocketbooks just from a property value perspective and from a commercial perspective. There are around 60 homes just like this one falling apart in Morgantown and experts say they pose many environmental and safety hazards to the neighborhoods that they're in. And residents like Keith McIntyre believe rundown homes have become somewhat of a staple in the community. Some neighbors looking at burned out windows like you're in a battlefield or something. It's just Morgantown. But within a few months time, Morgantown will see plenty of change. Although the process has just started, volunteers have already been trained to identify bad buildings and will begin creating redevelopment plans next month. Cassie Taylor, WVU News, Morgantown. Officials with the Bad Buildings Program will meet again over the next month. Their ultimate goal is to redevelop abandoned buildings throughout the state. It's been 14 years since the tragic events of September 11, and Americans pledge to never forget. That's right, Emily. The words never forget are tweeted almost 100 times every hour of every day. Alyssa Aquavella joins us now from Social Square with the latest in social media and pop culture news. Alyssa? Thanks, Emily and Paige. One WVU professor has a unique way of showing the personal tragedies of 9-11 from all over the world and telling their stories. I got a chance to check out the opening of her new exhibit. Award-winning photographer Lois Raimondo is bringing light to what was happening in other countries during the tragic time of September 11th with the opening of the Fractured Spaces exhibit. It's really important to the local community to understand what other human beings are living completely normal life despite the stereotypes they carry around. The three-part show includes the exhibits in the wake of 9-11, Tibet in exile, and Safe House Pakistan. Raimondo's photos show how these people are overcoming political and cultural hardships. I hope that the pictures will allow somebody to walk into another space, into somebody else's reality, and for somebody to realize that, um, you know, an event um, that's far away impacts a person and a family um, in a very, very intimate way. Raimondo says she needs to be the voice for the people of these countries who can't speak out. I think about the people who, at great risk to themselves, made sure that I was safe so I could tell these stories. So for me, it's a huge responsibility to make sure that I do it right. Raimondo, who works for the Reed College of Media, so will have her photos displayed on the first and second Reed floors of the WVU Library and in the spiral staircase. Fractured Spaces is part of the new program, Art in Libraries, which decorates library walls like these with pieces created by someone who has ties to West Virginia or WVU. Some photos show happiness and joy, while others show turmoil. However, Sheena Voss says she feels proud when looking at these photos. It's really a, a moment of pride to actually see this and say, you know what, I'm from there, I've been there, and people get to see this and see my side of the story too, so it's really nice. 80 photos from all over the world were featured in this exhibit. Fractured spaces will remain in WVU's library until April, then it will travel the country to different museums and universities. Thanks, Alyssa. Milan Pushkar Stadium is currently under construction. Sports reporter Joe Lipovich tells us what renovations are being made to the stadium. 
I'm Joe Lipovich, and straight ahead on this week's edition of WVU News, I'll tell you why Milan Pushkar Stadium is getting a much-needed makeover. Every journey starts with a first. How will you go first? Caroline, I understand game day at Milan Pushkar Stadium is about to become a lot more exciting. Can you tell us what's going on there, Caroline? Well, Emily and Paige, Milan Pushkar Stadium is 35 years old and it's showing its age, so it's time for a major facelift. Construction has already begun on the stadium's east side as part of a $100 million campus-wide renovation. Upgrades include new bathrooms, more concession stands, and heated and padded box seats. Needless to say, the fan experience will be enhanced. Joe Lipovich explains. Mountaineer Field and Milan Pushkar Stadium will undergo a $45 million renovation within the next two years. The concourses of the stadium will expand by 25 to 50 feet to improve the fan experience. But it's because Mountaineer Field's built in 1980 and the concourses and the restrooms and anything sort of dedicated to the fan experience hasn't been renovated since then. Milan Pushkar Stadium was already voted the sixth best stadium in the Big 12 according to Athlon Sports. But many other Big 12 stadiums have already had major renovations since the year 2000. Construction will add more concession stands and 50% more bathrooms. The crown of the field, used for drainage before turf was installed, will also be removed. WVU punter Nick O'Toole said that the removal of the crown in the field can't come soon enough. It's just you're on an uneven surface. It's like the, the field goes from the outside and it like mounds in the top and I mean it's turf. There's no point in having it like that. The student section will now include handicapped accessible ADA seating so that disabled students can sit with their peers, something that Meserly said was a big concern. Joe Lipovich, WVU Sports, Morgantown. Not only are they renovating the stadium, but they are also replacing the grass practice field with turf. Emily Page, back to you. Thanks, Caroline. We'd also like to congratulate Megan Metcalf, the first women's cross country runner to be inducted into the WVU Sports Hall of Fame. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of WVU News. You can visit us online at our website. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube. And please follow us and our reporters on Twitter. I'm Paige Madden. And I'm Emily Swecker. Thanks for watching WVU News. We'll see you next time.